I'm back. Well, what have we got today? Well, you could call it an old friend. Uh, it's a, uh, a tremolo unit that I uh, reviewed previously. And I was looking at one of my uh, original guitars from uh, about 2010. It was a, a Warmoth job at the time. And I fitted a Fender tremolo on it. And it had never been uh, really perfect on the tremolo. Although the rest of the guitar seemed pretty much spot on to me. It's had about 1.2 or 1.3 million views uh, ever since I did that, uh, that video of that guitar. But I thought it was time to upgrade the, uh, you know, the tremolo because, well, it was time. <laughs> and I contacted a guy uh, who I know, uh, yeah, at a company called Halon. Now, anybody that's seen my... Uh, type of reviews of tremolos before will know that I gave the Halon uh, tremolo actually one of the highest scores that I could and uh, I, it probably is one of the best tremolos in the world. This one uh, is slightly different but in many ways it's very similar to the one I reviewed but so I'll cover the things that are slightly different and then we can get down to fitting this tremolo into the uh, well, the best Fender Strat in the world. So in any case, I think it's time we took a look at the, uh, the Halon uh, vintage tremolo. This one's in gold, by the way, because the guitar is. But you'll notice that the, uh, the saddles, the saddles are not gold. And there's a very good reason for that. Anyway, let's go down and see what it's all about. Well, here we are taking a look at the Halen uh, vintage Fender Stratocaster tremolo. And you can see it comes in a, a very nice box, but to be honest, the box isn't what matters. It's this unit here. Halen's a brand that comes from somewhere in Europe or near that way. Uh, I think it's Greece or somewhere like that. In any case, all the information's down below if you want to go and check out Halon uh, tremolos because this is something rather different. Uh, these are. Now, while it isn't overly gilded, I, I didn't really want to have that. What's important is this thing's made of 1060 steel. Uh, it's a vintage setup, so it'll fit the Mexican style of uh, sizing or width and the rest of it. And the American. Yeah, it seems to fit it all. It all seems to be pretty good, let's put it that way. But what's important about this is, if you look at these saddles here, as some guys said, I'm dangerous with this, but that's okay. If you look at these saddles, they have a whole number of choices for the materials available. Uh, and you can specify what they are. Now, I've gone for uh, one of the... Well, less, well, I wouldn't say it's less common. It's all down to choice, I guess, at the end of the day. This one's all about titanium. And these are titanium saddles. And as I said, check out that review down below, because when I did the review and played the guitar with a very similar tremolo to this, the sound was quite incredible. And I did a switch uh, for different saddles of different materials. And you could clearly hear the difference. Honestly, you need to check that. Also inside here, uh, on some of these uh, types of tremolos, you have a sort of plastic insert. But on this one, no, this one's a brass insert, uh, which helps to uh, stop the thing floating around. And, that, you know, the plastic inserts never really were that great. And by the way, this, uh, this tremolo comes with all the bits and pieces, all in a little box. And an arm. This one's a, a chromed arm, but that's okay. I've got plenty of arms, and they, they, they fit the standard uh, Fender one, which is uh, quite nice as well. You've even got a brass uh, core that handles all these uh, springs. Yeah, how does that? Okay, well, here we are with the guitar. As you might see, it's pretty cool. And uh, it's one of them guitars, once you've seen this one, You'll know it. It's, uh, as I said, very famous these days. It's been around. And while it might look like, uh, some guys say, oh, it's like plywood. In fact, it's, uh, it's solid, uh, solid wood. 
yeah quite nice bend the neck on it and all the rest but anything you want to know about this guitar I can point you down below in the text uh, and you can go and find out all about it the pickups are extremely uh, rare and I mean extremely rare but this uh, this tremolo unit well it's the bog standard one as I said uh, it's a fender one and it's nothing to shout about if you want the truth uh, this one here is going to make that sound much better and it sounds really good now if you want the truth with these pickups these are David White pickups by the way uh, you probably never heard of them but don't worry about that it makes no difference <laughs> David's no longer here so uh, you can't go and buy any okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the strings off change this tremolo over and uh, let you have a look at uh, what it's like when I've done that so hold on a bit let's get down to business okay well here we go uh, I'm just going to slacken the strings off first of course and there you have it well we can quickly uh, sort of snip these off It's not really rocket science, is it? Okay, well now it's a simple matter of uh, flipping off these six screws and this bridge will lift out. I've already taken the springs off the back and all the rest of it. It's no big deal, so I'm just going to pull that out now so we can get a look at the guitar a bit better before we fit the other, the other tremolo. Of course, in the case of uh, this tremolo, once you take the screws out then, well, it's the same with all this type. It's just a simple matter of lifting it straight out. So let's go and take a look at the uh, the two in comparison before we fit it uh, before we fit the new one that is into this guitar. Well, needless to say, <laughs> there's a pretty big difference, and uh, it's not really noticeable other than the uh, saddles unless you start to actually get in there and look closer. One of the things that gives uh, the differences away is if you look at the width of this here, this, this material, and you look at the width of this material, this is thicker material. In fact, it's quite a bit thicker, so it's a more robust design than the original. You'll find also that uh, when you look at the materials on the, on the weight at the back, that these are 1060 steel and all the rest of it, and I think this one might be uh, might be bell brass uh, or it might no I think it's steel but that's okay this one on the other hand well it's that not quite perfect stuff <laughs> you'll know it but thankfully it isn't one that's been cut away on the edges I might have even uh, no, it just looks like an original that does or one of the originals old style but once you come to these saddles, uh, again, it's, it's another story. Uh, honestly, these are just bent bits of tin. and They are what they are. There's not much more you can say. But the titanium uh, saddles change absolutely everything. And that really, as a combination of the two, it makes this one look really pretty, well, mediocre. That's a word I'd use. There's nothing wrong with it as such if that's the sort of thing you like you can see from the back it's machined nicer it's finished nicer it's sure the strings are going to fit in the holes in the same way and that sort of thing but overall there really is a substantial difference that this is heavier as well so i'm going to get the guitar back up and uh, screw this one in oh one thing just before i do the, that actually if you look at the uh if you look at the gold on this one, it's not as pronounced as that. That comes across as being like a sort of cheap gold, a cheap uh, sort of solution. Whereas this one, it's sort of washed in and washed out again. But I like that. That's, that's quite a nice uh, laid back uh, type of gold, you know, as opposed to this sort of glaring. This is like uh, what somebody might have in the teeth. <laughs> Particularly if they don't like it. Ah, growler armour. 
Well, as you can see, there it is in place. It's now a question of just fitting the six screws and then flipping some springs on the back and away you go, really. Uh, obviously, you've got the heights to set up and you've got the intonation to set up because well, this won't be correct. Now, here on uh, do supply screws uh, on this particular one that I ordered. These are like the same color as this. So don't be surprised if they're not actually uh, brass looking or gold colored. You can see that the Halon ones are shorter, but they're more stubby as well. Slightly more stubby at the top end. And I suspect that these are hardened, where these ones here, well, are more run of the mill. So I'm going to fit these uh, newer ones that came with Halon because, well, if they're harder, it's probably a better choice. Simple as that, really. I'm not too worried about the gold uh, or any of that. Uh, it's a sort of mix anyway, so it doesn't really matter. If PRS can get away with it, surely I can. <laughs> okay, so the screws are in, just roughly for now. I'm going to go round the back and fit in the, uh, the springs. Uh, now, originally, uh, I did have three springs on this, and I think I'm going to leave it with three springs, because... Although it is a different bridge, uh, the springs in this setup worked uh, really well with three of them in there. And there's a quick shot of the springs uh, in situ. And I didn't change this one in there, although I might do later on, because this one, if you look at that compared to the sort of standard one, well, the standard one's in there, in there at the moment, thin. Uh, the, one, the standard one from Halon's a bit thicker, but this one's substantially thicker, and of course it's made of brass. I might fit that later, or not. Okay, well, as you can see, it's fitted. I've got the sort of tremolo arm just pushed in there a little bit, just so we can see the sort of lift that you can get on it. I don't have any pull-up on this one, or I might have by the time it's actually been adjusted up. But at the moment, you can see you get a, a great big long play on it, rather different than that ABM uh, uh, tremolo I, I looked at not long ago, which actually, unfortunately, I had to send back that was, uh, that was sad, really, because uh, I bought it from Toman, and sending it back became an absolute nightmare. Uh, I filled out all the documents. But give Toman credit where it's due, really, because ultimately they just refunded the tremolo without even receiving it back. Believe it or not, later uh, what happened uh, was Customs sent it back to me, because that's the way they were, because they were trying to get Toman pay customs duty on a product they already owned <laughs> it's a bit weird but uh, yeah I received the tremolo back and it's sort of sitting in a box here but don't really have much use for that at the moment at least uh, so there it is uh, there's this one this is the one we're talking about and there's plenty to go out with that so I'm going to set all this up and then we can have another quick look at it how does that sound I'll be back in a moment and by the way, uh, I'll be using uh, any more Super Slinkies 9-42s, which are my preferred strings, and uh, they're probably the preferred strings of a lot of the guys. Maybe more so for older guys like me, but uh, it's what I was brought up on. Actually, I went as low as 7 at one stage. <laughs> but there you go, so I'm going to go and fit them. And just while we're in passing and uh, I've fitted the strings, you might want to take something like this Big Ben's nut sauce. I don't know whose it is or where it is, other than what it says there. They didn't give it me, by the way, I bought it. But uh, the idea is you slip this out, and on each one of these sections you put a little bit of the stuff underneath the strings and just lift them back in place afterwards, and it helps stop them binding there, which is something I have seen off and on over the years. Okay, well here we are, set up. I've got a little bit of lift and a lot of down, which is the way I like things. The string height set pretty low on this one actually. It's pretty, pretty nice to play. And uh, I've done the intonation thing. I don't need to really do uh, anything on the neck because the neck, well, the neck was there before. So it's just a question of fitting the bridge and couple of adjustments uh, on this to get the intonation right and one of the things I find that uh, can bug me on a, on a on a Stratocaster particularly of the the old style of design is these long screws you'll see them 
And what normally happens, there they are, comparing a shorter one, you can see there's a substantial difference. And what I tend to do is to take away the long screws out of the saddles and fit the short ones and then they, they don't dig in your hand at all. There's no real uh, negatives with any of this. They just don't dig in your hand and that's the main thing. Uh, so that's something I do, not always, but sometimes. Anyway, there it is and uh, a cord, yeah. Whoops. There it is, if you can hear that. Well, there you have it. The Halon Bridge. It's an amazing piece of gear and uh, you might get to hear it a bit later or I might just throw you down to the other one that's down in the text and you can go and check it out yourself. That's a, a review that took me a long time because I had to keep changing the uh, saddles so you could hear you know, exactly what difference it made. These titanium ones, uh, for me, are really the best sounding ones for me. They might not be for you, but they make brass ones and steel ones and you name it. They've got loads of types of saddles. And I think that's the really the main takeaway from Halon uh, Bridges and Tremolos is this uh, customization of being able to get you know, really decent materials that do actually change your tone. They're not the cheapest in the world, but don't let that put you off. You only buy one of these once, unless it's one of these. <laughs> and as you know, I ended up buying another. <laughs> Isn't that the story of my life? Oh, yeah, it's a bit like a, a recent amp, I ended up buying another. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there you go. It's a 10 out of 10 for this bridge, uh, because I've been here before, I know exactly what they like. I like the variance in the colours and things like that. You may or may not, but uh, if you speak to the man there, uh, he'll help you to arrive at the, uh, the bridge and, or tremolo that you want, as opposed to what he wants to sell. And uh, I know he's happy to do all that stuff. Really uh, very useful. They're not always the easiest to guys to get hold of. Uh, and the, uh, the website's down again in the text like everything else. And uh, tell them Tony sent you. <laughs> I'm sure they'll appreciate that. Uh, so, 10 out of 10. This, the best Fender Strat in the world. Well, trust me, it is. And I've also put down in the text some of the playing on this one with these particular pickups. And I think you should really go and have a listen at that before you just write this off as... Oh, it's nothing, you know. <laughs> people do. Well, some people do, but a lot of people don't, actually. So, that's it for now on this one. I've only got a temporary uh, video recorder at the moment. New, uh, oh, it's not doing much there. Uh, a new wireless uh, microphone and stuff like that. It's all good. And don't forget to go to uh, www.tonymackenzie.com if you want to. Oh, by the way, there is another camera coming. I'm just waiting for it. It's back ordered, along with waiting for the chips for everything else in the world, including uh, a Porsche that uh, failed uh, when it was being programmed with uh, new fir firmware. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that took it off the road for a week. Somebody else has got a chip problem. <laughs> anyway, until next time, great to see you all. And uh, I'll look forward to more. Yeah. Now get out of here.